Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zillow Tech, and today Apple released iOS 18.1 Beta 3. iOS 18.1 Beta 3 is available to developers, and we don't know if Apple is planning a public beta until maybe after iOS 18 is released. It's still only on iPhone 15 Pro and iPhone 15 Pro Max, as well as M1 or later iPads and Macs. Now this particular update came in at 906 megabytes on my iPhone 15 Pro, and it was released alongside many other updates with iPadOS 18.1 Beta 3, macOS 15.1 Beta 3, along with iOS 18 Beta 8, and all the updates that come along with that. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then we'll go to general, then about. And as you can see, the build number is 22B5034E. And Apple has updated and added a few features in this update. And the first thing has to do with the modem. We have a modem update in beta 3 coming from beta 2. So we are now on version 2.20.00 on the iPhone 15 Pro devices. As far as new features, well, they've added the cleanup feature, but I wanted to show you one first because it has to do with when you first turn on your device. You'll see we have the hello screen on the iPad, and if we go ahead and unlock this, we'll go ahead and tap continue, give it just a moment here to complete. It's giving a splash screen for Apple intelligence. We'll tap continue and we have a new update for summarized notification previews. You can see it actually gives us an example and we can choose what's at which apps to use with summarization. You'll see it says summarize all notification previews or not now. So we can tap summarize them. And then it brings us to our Siri intelligent assistant tap continue. Tap continue again. It's telling us about type to Siri, and then we can get started. So once that's updated, it's good to go. And on the iPhone, we get the same sort of prompt for summarizing notification previews. If we go back into settings within settings, if we scroll down to notifications, we have a new section called summarize previews. If we go into this, we can disable it and it says summarize content in direct messages and groups of notifications, making them more succinct and easier to read. Summary accuracy may vary based on content, and then we can disable it on everything or turn it on on every app or turn them off based on what app we want. So this is something that possibly could take more battery life. We don't really know how it's working just yet, but it will take a few days to know that. Now, Apple added the new cleanup feature in photos this time around. While they haven't changed photos back to the original version, if we go in and maybe we zoom into this photo, we tap on it here. Let me lower the brightness a little bit since it's an HDR photo. And if we go to edit the photo, we'll zoom back in here. And then if we tap on this, you'll see that we have a new cleanup tab. So you'll see it says clean up there. If we go into clean up, we'll zoom in. And again, Apple is great with animation. So maybe we want to get rid of this bird feeder here or birdhouse rather. We'll go in, highlight it, it sort of highlights. It knows that I'm trying to select everything and then deletes it and fills the background. We can do the same with this birdhouse over here and it deletes it and it does a pretty good job there. However, if we go to the next one here, let's cancel this. We can discard the changes. And again, this is in beta. So keep that in mind. If we go to the next one here, you'll see this is actually a creator meetup in Vegas at CES. Maybe we'll try and get rid of Patrick here. This is Patrick rambles. We'll go ahead and tap clean up and then we'll just highlight here. See if we can get rid of him and see if it will fill the background. So it didn't really do it correctly. If we go back, of course we can give a thumbs up and thumbs down. We'll go back. We'll try it again. Let's see if it works properly. And it didn't work properly that time. And that's okay. It does seem to be a little bit buggy from time to time trying to delete things. Let's try one other. If we go into this photo, let's try and go into cleanup. And I noticed before it was sort of giving some suggestions as to what it might think you want to delete. So you'll see there's a vehicle in the background here. So maybe we'll get rid of that one see if it gets rid of it. It highlighted it and then it sort of didn't do a great job. Now I've seen this do a different job on this same photo. So let's try this again. We'll highlight the whole thing, see if it will fill that in and fix that properly. Sometimes it does a great job. Other times it doesn't, it seems to be a little bit buggy, but again, keep in mind, this is a beta and then it's sort of suggesting things here as well. So if we try and get rid of that, it got rid of it. It did a pretty good job here, but if we try and get rid of the car as a whole, I couldn't get this to work properly before, but let's see what happens here. So with this Lotus Amira, this is at a local dealership here. 
I took this photo and I thought we'd try it out. It just sort of sits here. It doesn't do anything. And then it locks up. So if I swipe out and go back in, it sort of works. Sometimes it doesn't, it's fully locked up. I can't tap on anything. So it's still a little bit buggy in its early phase. And then it didn't do a great job. So definitely something that could be improved. I would expect this to be improved a little bit more in the future. If we go into messages and maybe we're typing a text to someone using iMessage, we have the predictive text, but third party stickers now seem to work properly in line. So we can add that in line if we have those third party stickers. But if we go here and maybe select a new one, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So if we maybe select Parappa, it worked right there. Sometimes it doesn't, it seems to be a little bit buggy, but definitely is something you can do now where you couldn't use third party stickers before. Apple has also updated some animations in specific apps. If we go into music, I have beta two on the left, beta three on the right, and we'll open up this album. It now expands from the album. So tap on it again and you can see it expand. So this is something that's sort of new throughout where we have this in podcasts, as well as TV and also books. If we go into podcasts, maybe we'll go up to this one here and it just expands from wherever you're tapping. So that's a nice new update. We also have an update that Apple released to everyone today with 17.6.1 and other devices. So if we find our wallet here within the wallet app, if we go to add a driver's license or state ID, they've now added Hawaii. So this is up to the local state or government to work with Apple to add this. California should be coming soon as well, but we can now add Hawaii. And if we go into that and you live there, you can add that driver's license to be used as your ID if you want to. Now, just like iOS 18 beta eight, we had quite a few splash screens. If we go into photos. I took screenshots of all of them. You'll see we have a new one for home. We have a new one for free form as well as a little reading goals pop-up that shows up in the books app. Then we have a welcome to passwords for the new passwords app. Also what's new in notes as well as journal translate voice memos. We had that summarization preview and that's about it this time around. So lots of different splash screens as Apple gets this sort of ready for public release more so with iOS 18 though. Now there's some bug fixes in this update as well. If we press and hold Siri, it activates right away and has that nice new animation before sometimes you'd press it and it would sort of expand a little bit right here and not work properly. Now it's working properly each time with that nice new animation where things sort of wave back and forth. We also have text to Siri, just double tap the little home bar there. And that works every time now as well. So this is something that's been updated and refined. Now there was a crash bug I mentioned in a separate video before. And if we go into settings and then we go into search, we can type quote, quote, colon, and then a fourth digit and it would crash search. That's fixed on iOS 18.1 beta three, but it's still occurring on iOS 18 beta eight. So if we type a fourth digit here, it will crash settings and then you just have to go back into it. It doesn't seem to harm anything or be a security issue, but it is something that will crash it, but does seem to be fixed in beta three. I've tried it here. I've tried it in the app library and I'm not noticing any issues. So that's definitely fixed. And it does seem that the overall performance is better than the previous beta. It doesn't seem to be a hundred percent as I showed you with photos. It still has some work that needs to be done, but things are nice and smooth and definitely perform a little bit better opening different apps, going into Safari, whatever we're loading seems to be better here. Now, as far as the release notes go at this point, I didn't see that they've updated them yet. So if we go into feedback, let's see if they've updated them. They finally have, and you'll see there's just a few things here with general notes altogether. So known issues, some new features. So it says when using Apple intelligence, the new Siri UI may fail to render full screen on large CarPlay displays. They're aware of this and it's still an issue. So known issues with mail and the lock screen as well. And then they've sort of deferred you to iOS 18 beta eight for everything else. So that's something that seems to be the same notes as beta six and beta seven. That's also public facing. So if you go back, go in here, let's refresh. And if we go to the release notes, you'll see here, it's the same thing. So no changes here, very small update as far as that goes, but a few additional features. As far as the overall heat, while well, the phone is definitely warm, it's going to be a little bit warm processing all of those different summaries and everything else. So we'll wait for it to finish that. And if we go into battery, let's take a look. This device is not my main device right now. iOS 18.1 beta two was fairly bad as far as battery life, but you'll see this one so far today, we have two hours and eight minutes of screen active time at 17 minutes of screen idle time. And we're down to 61%. Previous updates with beta two were pretty horrible on this device. So if we go back 
and again to battery. We'll go in and battery health. You'll see I'm down to 92% with 286 cycles. This one only has 20 cycles. So in general, battery was pretty terrible using this. I was only getting three hours and 31 minutes using a hundred percent of the battery. So hopefully this one is much better, but that takes a few days to measure and we'll check that in the future. As far as if you should install iOS 18.1 beta three, I would highly recommend against it at this point. I would recommend iOS 18 public betas at this point and beta eight seems to be pretty stable, but it will take a few days to know. But in general, the overall iOS 18.1 beta three or beta two experience was pretty poor as far as the usability, but it's an early beta and I would recommend just avoiding that unless you have an additional phone. Now, Apple did announce the iPhone 16 event where we'll have the iPhone 16, 16 16 plus 16 pro and 16 pro max that will take place on September 9th at 10 AM Pacific time, 1 PM Eastern. And usually after that, we'll get the announcement of when iOS 18 releases to the public. We'll get the RC right after the event typically and iOS 18 will probably release to the public around probably the 16th. If we take a look at the calendar here, Based off of what we've seen in the past, we'll have the RC probably on the 9th, and then we'll have the public release either later that week or the 16th. That's what I would expect for that. But with iOS 18.1 beta four, we could see that as soon as next week, or it could be a bi-weekly release at this point. We also could see an iOS 17.6.2 released, but that would be a very minor update, maybe some security updates. And I'm not sure where those rapid security responses have gone. We haven't seen any of them for quite some time. As far as the overall benchmarks, let's take a look at that. So we'll go into Geekbench here and we scored 2,838 for single core, 6,866 for multi-core. Running that right after installing the main update seems to be pretty good. This is actually compared to a previous iOS 18 beta. So it's doing pretty well, but it's not as good as previous updates with public releases. So it seems to have gotten worse, but I would expect it to get a little bit better over time. And again, we'll check this in a few days on the weekend with the follow-up video, typically on Saturday. Now, if you've found any additional updates or changes in iOS 18.1 beta three, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And of course I'll link this wallpaper in the description. Like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time. <laughs>